All right, so today we're going to finish up chapter 8. Okay, finish this up. This will get us ready for the exam next Wednesday when you come back. Okay. So we left off looking at the hydrogenation reaction. Okay. And we want to look at that in a little bit more detail. Okay. So just by way of review. Remember we were looking at something like this where we had alkene and hydrogen and a metal catalyst. And what that did was it converted the double bond to a single bond. Okay. And remember it did that by adding these two hydrogens across the double bond. So we hydrogenated the double bond. Okay. We should be ready to take notes before class starts. We hydrogenated the double bond or we saturated the double bond with hydrogens. Or we did what? We reduced the double bond. Okay? We reduced it. Okay? So hydrogenation reactions is a reduction reaction. Okay? Well, what I want to do now is Remember that one of the main properties of the hydrogenation is that it went by syn addition. Okay? It went by syn addition. And remember, we can see syn or anti-addition when we look at a ring. So let's draw a cycloalkene here. Okay, and let's do our hydrogenation reaction. Okay, so my two hydrogen atoms will add across the double bond in syn manner. So I can draw my two hydrogens on the same side, and I'll see my two methyl groups on the same side. Okay. So you end up getting the cis isomer for that product there. Okay. So the two methyls are on their side and the two <coughs> hydrogens are on their side, okay? So this is demonstrating the syn addition there that you normally don't see with linear molecules, okay? Well, let's look at a little bit more detail of why this adds on with syn addition, okay? And it has to do with this metal catalyst, okay? The metal catalyst, what it does is it acts like a sheet of paper acts like a sheet of paper. And what it does is when it mixes with the hydrogen gas, it absorbs hydrogen atoms onto it. Okay? So all these hydrogen atoms absorb onto a side of that sheet of paper. <coughs> OK? 
Okay. Well, when I bring a double bond into the picture, okay, how does the double bond behave here? Okay. Well, remember, when I look at a double bond, these carbons are sp2 carbons. Okay. And sp2 carbons, remember, are planar. Taking any notes? So a double bond is planar, so it's going to act like a sheet of paper. So what happens is this sheet of paper, double bond, comes on this sheet of paper. And these hydrogens add on to those two carbons. So you can see why it's occurring with syn addition. You've got the hydrogens on top of this sheet of paper, and the double bond coming here, so they're adding on the same side of the double bond. Okay? So that's why we get syn addition of these hydrogen atoms. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, let's move on to our next reaction. Again, if you have your index cards, I highly encourage you to be writing these down so you can get these things memorized. Okay, our next reaction is what's called the epoxidation reaction. The epoxidation reaction. Okay, so let's see what this word here deals with. What we're going to do in this reaction is take an alkene plus a peroxy acid and make something called an epoxide. An epoxide. Okay. So let's see what these new terms are here. Okay. A peroxy acid has this functional group. Okay. So you can see it's similar to a carboxylic acid, but we have an extra oxygen in there. Okay. Remember that the oxygen oxygen bond. is the peroxide bond. Remember we saw that with hydrogen peroxide? So I'm combining a peroxide bond with an acid, so we get what's called a peroxy acid. Okay. So that's what that name is. The epoxide, what it is, is it's a three-membered ring with an oxygen in there. Okay. And so that's why we call it an epoxidation. This is a way to make epoxides. Has anybody ever heard of epoxides before? Where have you heard of them before? In epoxy glues. Exactly. So these things have 
those linkages in there. So let's look at an example of this. with a peroxy acid. Here it is. What I do, write down the directions. I go to the double bond and I convert the double bond to the epoxide group. Let's do another example. One more example. they had started cis on this side, then they would be cis on that side. Okay. Any questions on that there? The other thing to point out is this peroxy acid is sometimes condensed. Like this. Okay? Where I show all three oxygen atoms in a condensed formula like that. So be on guard, sometimes you'll see it written like that. So that's the epoxidation reaction. Any questions on that one? In the book, when you read chapter 8, you will see they then go in and do chemistry that show how the epoxide ring can then react. It's not going to do that here, okay? So don't worry about that section in chapter 8, because there's, when we get to chapters 10 and 11, that's when we'll deal with that chemistry. Okay. We got enough chemistry going on in chapter eight without getting into that. Okay? So you can skip over that for the time being. Okay, let's go on to our next reaction which is what's called the 
dye hydroxylation reaction. What do you think we're going to put on a double bond with this thing here? Two hydroxy groups, two OH groups. Okay, very good. So, what's the setup? The setup is we're going to take an alkene and we're going to react with one of two different reagents, if you look on your outline. We can react with KMNO4 and OH minus as one. Okay, remember KMNO4 is called potassium permanganate. Or, we can react with OSO4, which is called osmium tetroxide. So there's two ways to do this same reaction. Okay. The end result that we get is a vicinal diol. What does vicinal mean again? Mm -hmm. Neighbors. So I get two OHs on neighboring carbons. Okay. And what's the last piece of information that maybe you would like to know? Are the OHs sin or anti? Okay, so these go on by sin addition. Okay, so we're loading up on the sins. When we started all this, we had a bunch of antis, didn't we? Now we're coming back to the sins. Okay. All right, so let's look at some examples of this setup here. I come to the double bond and I put two OHs. So we get our vicinal dial. Okay. Or I have a cyclic ring. Now I'll be able to see that sin addition very nicely. 
So let's maybe use the other reagent so that it doesn't get left out. So potassium permanganate, OH minus. Gives the vicinal diol, but now we see the syn addition to give me the cis product. questions on that. Okay, so that's the dihydroxylation reaction. Okay. We've got two more reactions to go here. trans relationship. Okay. So that's why I'm using the dashes and wedges. Okay. okay. Now you could use the line, but then you have to put the hydrogens in right. to okay. show cis or trans. Mm -hmm. But this way is a little easier. Okay. okay. So let's look at oxidative cleavage. Okay. So let's see what this means. Cleavage, you know, I'm going to do cleave something in two, break it in two. Oxidative means I'm probably either going to add oxygen or a double bond. Okay, that's what oxidation means. So let's look at the setup here. <coughs> is a little tricky because we just used KMNO4 and here we're using it again but note it's a warm solution and it's a concentrated solution okay so that's the difference from the last reaction make a note of that because it gets a little tricky as you do these problems what we do here is we do a cleavage so we're going to cleave the double bond like that. And so this thing splits up into two different fragments. Okay? And the fragments that it gives you are two acid fragments. Okay. So you see how you get oxidation, I'm adding two oxygens and a double bond. So this is a very strong oxidative cleavage. Okay. Let's look at some examples. Here. Okay. So here, a 
I'm using warm concentrated KMnO4, signifies cleavage. So let me cleave the bond. And so I'll add a acid fragment here and an acid fragment over here. So there's the acid <coughs> fragment to the short side. And there's the acid fragment to the longer side. Let me give you an example, see if you can do this one on your own. <coughs> see if you can draw the product of that one, starting with cyclohexene. I'll have somebody come up to give me the answer. wants to come up and give it a try. Come up and help her. <laughs> Give it to her. She likes to use her phone. <laughs> Finish it. Finish it. Anybody know right back? I'm just guessing. Oh. Does anybody know who right back is? No. Oh. Yeah. Who wants to finish it? You? I, I don't. Donald? I guess, um, I don't know. I don't want to do that. 
tricky because it's a ring, okay? But you get two pieces, but those two pieces stay together because they're connected in a ring. Okay. Mm -hmm. Doctor, right. can you read out? You make it more bold. reactions, another cleavage, but we'll do a different reagent. Okay, so one is warm KMNO4. Let's look at the second way. Okay, so here, what we're going to use is those analysis. Okay? So what word do you see in there? Ozone. Ozone. Okay? So here we're going to use ozone, which is O3. Okay? And you can either use zinc or dimethyl sulfide, we'll talk about sulfides later on in chapter 11, but either one of these does a cleavage where I don't get an acid group, but it just converts it to a carbonyl, okay? So it's not as strong of an oxidation. Okay? Let's do some examples. Finish this up here. Examples, see if you can draw the products. And I will be asking for volunteers.
the first one. I want to do the first one. Try it. This carbon also has that hydrogen. <coughs> how about and then what about the other one? No, you're right. Just draw it on the other side. There you go. Okay, good. You can have a seat. So you just splitting me and just put the double one. That's it. See how easy that is? So it's a little easier than the first one. You just split it, cleave it, and then just put a double bond O on both carbons. It's that easy. Oh, I know why. Okay. Who wants to do the second one? I'll try. You already came up. Okay, I'm sorry. We want somebody new. I say Donald. Be a man. Finishes chapter eight. That finishes it. So that's the end for the exam, which will be next Wednesday. Okay. Three o'clock back there. Okay. So study hard over the Easter break. I'm looking forward to seeing you then.